Hey. So we have been hanging out here at the Hosgrove campground in Haleakala for, gosh, it's been about 24 hours now. Hosmer Grove. Didn't I say Hosmer Grove? You said Hosgrove. <laughs> oh, Hosgrove. This is Hosmer Grove campground. <laughs> And when we were researching how to do Maui van life, um, this campground came up and so did the campground that we were up at last night, the Kipa, Kipa Hulu. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I mess up the names of these campgrounds, but Kipa Hulu, I believe is the name of that campground that we were at last night. So when researching van life in Maui, um, I think it was three or four different places came up. And this one, it's pretty spectacular. It's in the middle of the forest in the national park. And so the two campgrounds that we stayed at here have both been national, or the last two days have both been national park campgrounds. And they were recommended to us as places to visit, so we decided we'd come visit. And then we've got some other recommendations from locals that we've met to go to other places. So we'll show those in our future videos. Yeah. Uh, it was $25 to get in and it gave us three days here, which is a smoking deal because there's so much to do while you're here. You pay your $25 and you can camp at either campground and the, between the hikes and going up to Haleakala last night and watching the sunset. We could have gone and watched the sunrise, but we were too tired. <laughs> Plus it was cloudy, so the people that went up there to see it didn't see a whole lot. That's true. We wanted to just sit down and talk to you a little bit about van life on the islands. And uh, when we were researching it, because when we were considering coming here and doing this, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there about island van life. I had heard things along the lines of, you know, locals look down on it and it's hard to find places to stay. So we're going to cover that in this video. First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to RJ and Alicia from Maui Van Life, who, that's how we scored the Rebel. <laughs> You may be wondering, you know, how did you get your Rebel to Hawaii? We have been asked that in our last video. Um, no, we didn't inflate the tires really full and drive over here. Uh, <laughs> it's not amphibious. Um, I'm sure you figured that out by now and I'm being sarcastic. Our Rebel is sitting back in Alaska, plugged in and nice and warm waiting for us to come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a borrowed van from uh, Maui Van Life. If you're interested in what we're doing and this experience looks like something that you might like, which I think you would, if you're watching these, our videos, I think you would really enjoy this, then you should really look up uh, Maui Van Life. They're on Instagram and they're also on Outdoorsy and they rent their Revel. And the thing about these guys is they're family owned and they completely take care of you. The Revel is stocked with everything we could possibly need. It has towels, shampoo, dish soap, um, a barbecue grill, <laughs> plates, cups, forks, everything that you could possibly need. And they took really good care of it. Mechanically, it's in good condition. So taking the Hana Highway or coming up Haleakala, we had no concerns. <coughs> we did see a few other fans, and I'm just going to throw this out there, uh, that weren't quite wanting to make the road. They were rented vans. Westphalias. They were having a problem. <laughs> so one of the questions that we got was, why did we choose to do the Rebel here as well? Well, primarily because we wanted to show how versatile the Rebel is. We are not sponsored by Winnebago whatsoever. Uh, we just really, really, really are... Uh, Revelers. Yeah. <laughs> We love our van and we just want to show how versatile that van is and the places that we can go, the places we can see, and the things that we can do. Yeah. I think that going on vacation and, you know, renting a van is not something that a lot of people think about. If you're considering a Revel, I think that renting it might be a really good option for you. 
Just, yeah, definitely to see if it fits your needs because our needs are not the same as everyone else's and what we enjoy doing and the minimalist lifestyle that we have doesn't translate for everybody and some people need more space they need more storage they need more this or that well for us everything is perfect yeah i don't need much <laughs> we haven't had to refill water or anything like that yet it's day four we still have plenty of water the solar has been powering everything when they say four seasons it's completely four seasons that even in hawaii it works well we cook oh yeah we haven't eaten out the entire time we've been here we've cooked every single meal we get our our veggies at the farm stands at Silo road I got which avocados. is super cheap <laughs> so i got avocados lilikois bananas and an orange for four dollars and in alaska an avocado one avocado costs over three dollars just for one and it doesn't even taste that great so i'm super excited about my avocados <laughs> it's hard you know you see all these fruit stands along the way you definitely have to stop and um, stock up on fruit because <sighs> even if it looks like it's a scary place to stop because mm -hmm. the roads aren't very wide but we managed to do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like the next fruit stand we see uh you need to pull over because i want an avocado and he gave me some free fruit too which is pretty awesome i gave him the four dollars and he kind of like knocked on the window and said here have some more um and that's the beautiful thing about hawaii also the road to hana let's talk about that a little bit the road to hana was nerve-wracking uh, not because of us because we like to take our own pace we're not in a hurry we're enjoying our drive but more because of the tourists in the jeeps who fly around corners and don't really care and so that was something we had to be aware of all the time while driving so uh, i know we did a lot of videos and i didn't talk a whole, a whole lot because i'm trying to really focus in on what i'm doing because just one wrong corner and you know the end of our vacation <laughs> <laughs> Well, on a positive note, the Rebel handled it very well. There are other vans out there, and there's a tour vans out there as well. It's just a matter of taking it slow. The part that confused me the most is people are on vacation. Why are you flying down this road that has 300 and some odd hairpin turns? Why are you going so fast? What's the reason behind that? I don't know. But I know that if I was to see one more red Mustang or one more Jeep, I was just about to lose my mind. Um, so this was, for me, this was the third time I've done the Road to Hana. And each time, it's gonna be different. And it's gonna be different for you guys, no matter what time of day you leave. You know, if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That was a rough road. It's different every time. So the first time I did it, I, uh, I got car sick. The second time I did it, my friend uh, who was with me got in the back and she was completely nervous and having an anxiety attack. I was in the Volkswagen Bug that time. This time was the most enjoyable time I've ever had. And maybe because I wasn't driving. <laughs> it was a fun drive. The Like she said, the Rebel handles it perfectly. It has enough power and it, it wasn't too, I don't know. It wasn't too big for the road. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it wasn't, there's parts of the road that are like one lane mm -hmm. and you just have to, when it says yield to other people, just yield to other people. And we did the entire road on the backside. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to Hana and back, we went all the way around. And I think the second half was an easier road and probably, I mean, it's not all jungly, it's more dry, but just as beautiful from a different perspective of what you can find on the island. Right. It would, and I think that when you said road, that was a little bit of a loose terminology because it is more like... Yeah, it's dirt road and... An old wagon trail. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the rental companies if they allow it up there, but I did see some rental cars up there. There were some red Mustangs up there. They, they were just tearing those things up up there, but you can do it. I did it in my Volkswagen Bug up there. Um, just take it easy. So for our experience was, it was amazing. We just decided to take it easy. And we'd stop and take pictures and hikes and so it worked. Yeah. I think, you know, this being the third time, this was the first time I'd ever actually swam in a waterfall or 
took pictures with a waterfall or went for a hike. Um, most of the times it's hard to find a place to pull over on the side of the road. Um, this time, because we had no time limits, we didn't have to be back at a condo by a certain time or before sunset or before the road got dark and it was scary to drive. Uh, we took our time and it was just amazing. <laughs> For the road to Hana, everybody's going to give you the same advice, you know, leave early, go early, but then everybody's going to be leaving early. And we've also noticed that people are like lemmings, you know, you, you pull over to the side of the road and then there's another 10 people pulling up right beside you and um, that's okay. Good. So because we haven't done a Q&A for a while, one of the questions that have come up also was how our S-Bar is doing in the winter up in Alaska. And just to address that real quick. It, Fantastic. Um, we've had no water issues. We've had heat. It stays completely warm. The insulation, of course, has helped. We have no condensation. Uh, I noticed this morning on here, because we're up so high and the temperature is a little bit cooler, it's about 40 degrees. Um, behind the windshields, we do have, or behind the windshield shade, we do have condensation build up. So the way that we're doing it is keeping that condensation away. Mm -hmm. As far has been good for us in Alaska. Um, here, was up here at Haleakala, you definitely need the heater. We have friends up here who are staying up here that we've run into that they don't have a heater and they're doing okay, but it was a nice comfort to run it last night. So behind us, um, there's about 15 different camp spots and last night we had about three different tents and you just have to make sure that when you camp here and you're in a tent that you are in a designated camping area because our girlfriend just told us that a ranger came by last night and told her that she couldn't camp where she was camped right up the road. I think she was just right off the side of the road. So they are a little bit more strict about camping and boondocking here, which we expected. Since we've been here we've met several new people. Um, who have given us advice and who really are probably going to be friends for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that tends to happen. Um, and we're not afraid to talk to people and meet new people and... Um, the locals may seem like they don't really want to talk to you from the get-go, but I don't know, we haven't had any problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole deep, deep Alice in Wonderland whole type of conversation between the locals and the non-locals, but my advice Just talk to people. Be nice. <laughs> you know, just respect the land, respect them, respect that this is their home, just like anywhere that you go. Um, if you have respect, then they'll respect you. And they'll give you advice and tips and tricks and mm -hmm. we learned how to fish yeah. in the ocean mm -hmm. from one of them. Which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So we started talking to this local guy when we were at Baby Beach and um, he had three poles and he gave Jim a pole and Jim went out and started fishing and uh, we made fun of him the whole time and that was the best part is there really isn't a huge difference between Alaska and Hawaii when it comes to locals and natives. It's just like if you come and you're from somewhere else, just be respectful. And um, this guy gave us a lot of tips and we have his phone number and address and he'll be a friend for a while. We can't really see our future selves right now. We don't know what's in store for us for the next, the rest of the time that we're here. We have no idea where we're going or what we're doing. We really are just playing it by ear. And so far it has been an amazing experience. I also believe that there is a place here in Maui that rents camping equipment. So, you know, if renting a van isn't your thing, if you wanna rent a car, they rent out tents and everything that you need for camping. So van life on the islands, uh, if you research it, take it for what it's worth. But in our opinion, it has been one of the best experiences that we've had. Mm -hmm. I've been to Maui a lot. Yeah. Rented condos, done that whole thing. This has just been something completely unique and different. About five minutes ago, the sun was shining bright and now we have this really light mist on us right now. It changes like every five minutes. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here and you're just now joining us and you wanna see what happens on the rest of our adventures, hit that subscribe button and ding our bell because you'll be notified our future videos. If you have anything you wanna say, give us a comment in the comment section below. We always love to hear from you.